Yeah, just as an opening statement, I'm sure you're all aware that uh, as a result of uh, circumstances in Western Australia, we introduced a hard border uh, restriction for people travelling from WA into South Australia at 10.15 last night. And uh, given the level of interest in that particular um, set of circumstances, I've made myself available to answer questions. How long do you anticipate this to keep going before Commissioner? What new information have you received overnight after the hard border? So since we made the, uh, the the direction effective, we haven't had any further information. AHPPC, I believe, are meeting now. If they're not meeting now, they'll be meeting very soon. And that will be the avenue that we receive further advice in relation to what's exactly happening with uh, Western Australia. And any decisions we make will be based on that advice. Why, why the hard border so soon? Well, it is uh, about uh, two aspects, I think. Firstly, it's the fact that we are potentially talking about the UK strain of the virus, which we're led to believe is uh, more virulent, more transmissible, uh, and that therefore has the ability to affect more people within the community. The second aspect is we don't have a lot of information at this point in time in relation to what's occurring in Western Australia and the extent to which they're undertaking their contact tracing efforts. So when we have that level of confidence in relation to their activities, we'll be in a position to make adjustments to our restrictions. And I would imagine uh, when we do have that information, then we will be more specific with the area that we are prohibiting uh, from entering into South Australia. So we'll reduce the area of our restrictions. Just speaking about the UK strain, what is the potential role effects from this if it does come out that the UK strain is going to Well, see, the problem for us in South Australia, it's a good problem to have, but we have um, freed up as much uh, activity within the state as possible in a COVID uh, environment, which means uh, our physical distancing rules are more relaxed than other places. Uh, our caps for uh, events and activities are higher and our ability for businesses to trade is greater. So if we do have COVID-19 find its way into the community, the risk of it spreading more quickly and, and, and going through our community is much greater. So we're trying to find that balance where we keep our community activity as high as possible uh, but have a, have a fallback position where we can prevent the spread as quickly as possible if it does find its way in. Now with the UK virus being more transmissible, that means that presents a greater risk if it does get into South Australia. Commissioner, the um, uh, directions you signed at 10.15 last night, there was a public statement made just after 5 o'clock that said we were monitoring it overnight, yet the hard border was introduced last night with little or no public warning, yet and then a public announcement was made well after midnight. Do you, can you run through the process about how Certainly. that Yep. Transpired, please. Uh, well, I'm not aware of any public statement that uh, uh, related to us monitoring the situation. Uh, clearly, we are monitoring it, but uh, I'm not. I'm not saying it didn't occur, but I'm not aware of that one. I was advised about Western Australia's intention to implement a hard border, uh, a, a lockdown uh, for the Greater Perth area, at about three o'clock in the afternoon from the, New, uh, the Western Australia Commissioner. On that basis, uh, I, I contacted our people who were already being briefed by Health, South Australian Health, and uh, we put the mechanism in place to craft the direction that would see a, a lockdown for WA. Uh, the process of crafting that direction um, was completed at about, uh, uh, I suppose, 10 o'clock, and I signed the direction at 10.15. So that was the earliest that we could put the direction in place. If we had a mechanism that allowed us to do it more quickly, then we would have signed it earlier. Um, we understand the imposition this has on people in terms of a lack of advance notice, but uh, we are responding to a pandemic and it's not something that gives us the latitude to give people advance notice of our intentions and it is also a situation where we can't always provide a lag time for people to uh, sort their affairs out before the lockdown comes into effect. So it's it's about managing risk. The case of this um, quarantine worker in Perth has again opened up this debate yep. which you previously um, had words with us about. about <laughs> Um, working more more than one job, not yep. working outside of that system. The AMA, I believe in WA, has said that shouldn't be happening. You, your position on that hasn't changed. This doesn't show no, why my... that could be, a, you know, why, why there shouldn't be a higher level of remuneration, perhaps, to, to prevent these kind of people. Yeah. Well, the em the employment of people working in the the Medi hotel environment is not something for me to comment on. Um, I, I maintain my position that I'm. I'm not convinced, I remain to be convinced, that we are actually mitigating risk by stopping these individuals from undertaking one aspect of their personal life when a person who's working in a Medi-Hotel
could be sitting at the dining table with a family member who is an Uber driver, works in a gymnasium or a hospital. Um, I just don't see that as a proper approach to risk mitigation. And I don't think it's reasonable to expect people working in our quarantine environments to have to quarantine themselves when they're not at work. That's simply not feasible. So, um, yeah, my position hasn't changed on that. So how many um, people do you are aware of that are affected by the, the new restrictions, particularly backdating it to yep. Australia Day? Yep. Do you have an updated figure on how many are in quarantine or how many have been contacted? My advice is there are probably about uh, 2,700 people who have come in since the 26th of uh, January into South Australia from WA, and SA Health are in the process of contacting those people now. Um, the cross-border uh, travel application that people have to do online to come into South Australia uh, captures their details. So many of those people would have been contacted by text message. So that process is well underway. Are you aware of any um, special dispensations to apply either of the um, AFLW football teams now? No, no, I'm not aware of any uh, application for any sort of dispensation or exemption to the quarantine requirements. That's not to say it's not happening, but I'm certainly not aware of that. Exemptions are managed by SA Health. So the GWS team was already on a flight heading back to Sydney. Where did they stay last night? I don't know the answer to that, sorry. So why would, if they were meant to be quarantined here for two weeks, why have they not been allowed to head back to Sydney? Uh, quarantine doesn't prevent you from leaving the state if you're moving uh, on to another location, and as long as we're satisfied that you are travelling in a way that is uh, COVID safe. So I don't know the circumstances of their travel, but uh, we do have people who are leaving their 14 day quarantine period to leave South Australia. That happens regularly and has done for the course of this pandemic response. Commissioner, you explained to us why there was some confusion yesterday afternoon, year four, for example, as people Some were initially being told to get a test and go home. Then as the, this, this flight was basically being processed more, people were basically told not to go into the 14 days straight away. So it was a wide open Look, as much as we try to um, provide consistent and timely advice uh, from the outset. Uh, we are dealing with changing circumstances and there are significant resources and complexities around uh, implementing changes to the way we receive people into South Australia. So from the very outset of the advice that Western Australia was implementing a lockdown for five days, we started to manage the information that was being provided to people coming into South Australia. That evolved over the course of the, the next few hours to the point where we were more consistent and more uh, Across. Our people on the front line were more across exactly what they were going to be advising people. I think it's inevitable when we're dealing with such dynamic circumstances that there's going to be a, an element of confusion in those early stages until we sort of get that momentum we require to be consistent and, and across the board with the same advice. As the line about the sheriff and hotel was a little bit confusing. You said that people had to contact health authorities and then quarantine if they'd been in that area. Are you saying they have to self-isolate or quarantine in some other location? What does that mean? The only requirement that I'm aware of at this point in time is if uh, if you've been in the Sheraton or in Western Australia since the 26th of uh, January that you have to quarantine at home. So it, that there's no requirement at this point for people to go into a Medi Hotel. It's about getting the COVID test and isolating, quarantining at home uh, to ensure that you're doing your part in minimising the risk of spreading COVID-19 in South Australia. In your view, is the, the move by the WA government proportionate to the situation? The only time will tell. Um, we'll see what information we get out of AHPPC this afternoon. Um, obviously, we're closely monitoring. Uh, I think it's an indicator. Um, I think there's not too many jurisdictions in Australia now that haven't been pushed into a scenario where they're implementing a lockdown to contain the spread of the virus. I'm not personally aware of all of the information that the WA authorities have at their disposal, so we'll wait and see what comes out of that. Are you frustrated? Are you frustrated, therefore, with the lack of information that's coming? Are other jurisdictions, when there's been other, you know, New South Wales, open lines of communication, is that disappointing that you're not receiving that from WA? Uh, I can't, I couldn't comment on whether there's a, a, a need or a, a circumstance that would cause me to be frustrated. I think we need to see what the information is that they've acted on and how quickly they've acted. My understanding is they became aware of this positive case on Saturday afternoon evening and they've responded on Sunday so uh, once we have more information we'll know exactly uh, what they're dealing with and the, the approach they've taken but I think one thing we've learned over the last 12 months is that we have to be in a position to adapt our situation in South Australia and to be responsive to changing circumstances and I think most jurisdictions are learning that as well and we've had different scenarios where we've had um, different jurisdictions 
uh, with a slow burning situation. Uh, we have confidence in their contact tracing activities. Um, there's indications that they may be on top of that. We don't have that level of information for WA yet, so the, the precautionary approach we've taken is potentially quite severe in terms of the full lockdown for WA coming into South Australia, but we can adapt that as quickly as possible once we have the information that gives us the confidence they're on top of this. So you're not getting that information from WA time zone issue? Or what, what? Uh, look, I don't know. Um, the, the source of information about health activity in WA is through AHPPC and their liaison with our health professionals here in South Australia, and SA Health provide us the advice. So that all of that's happening now. Um, we responded to the fact that Western Australian authorities deemed it appropriate to lock down the Greater Perth area for a five day period. Uh, we need to be mindful of that and make sure we're doing our bit to protect the South Australian community. And when I say protecting the community, it's not just about making sure people don't get sick from COVID-19, it's about protecting the community in terms of the ability to continue trading and enjoying the lifestyle we have here in South Australia. If COVID-19 finds its way into the community, the last thing we want to be doing is talking about a South Australian lockdown. You mentioned as well reducing that size of the region. It's the biggest state in Australia. Is that is the vast expanse that you're able to sort of opening up that Norman Park? Well, it's what we've done with uh, New South Wales and we also did it with Queensland where we focused on uh, specific locations within the state. Um, the most recent one being New South Wales, where only on uh, one minute past midnight on Sunday, we uh, relaxed the restriction for the Greater Sydney area, including Wollongong and the Central Coast. Um, that's the first, this is only a couple of times now where we focused on certain parts of a state or territory as opposed to the entire state. There are complications with that, but we are trying to minimise the impact on not just South Australians, but all Australians moving between states. Do you already update you through checkpoints on the border? We've heard that some people are still flying into South Australia. Do you know what's happening there? From where? Uh, from WA, uh, we, we had a uh, hard checkpoint in place um, last night on the Western Australian, South Australian border. So people were being received by South Australian police officers as of last night. Uh, I've been in consultation with my counterpart in the Northern Territory and they have checkpoints in uh, for their part of the the border with Western Australia, so we have confidence no one's coming in through that way without being received and assessed. Are you aware of anyone who, has anyone contacted SA Health? Are you aware of who was either at the Sheridan or may have come to contact this guard or the guard's close contact? No, I don't have that specific information. And I will say, um, if people have received advice, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of questions within the community uh, where people have been contacted because they've come back from Western Australia since the 26th of January and they're asking the question, what about the people I've been in contact with? The advice is that people who have had contact with returning travellers should monitor their, their health and if they have any symptoms whatsoever, get a test as quickly as possible. That's, that's a, a very important message here. We simply can't contact everyone who may have been in contact with a person who's returned from South, uh, Western Australia. So if you do think you've had contact with such a person and you have any symptoms, please get tested at the earliest opportunity. Can we expect a similar... Um in terms of relaxing the restrictions, what you did in Greater Sydney, waiting for 14 days uh, between any community transmissions? I don't think that's necessarily a threshold that we'll be looking for in the first instance. As I said, once we have more information from Western Australia and we have an understanding of their contact tracing efforts and the results of that, we may be able to make some adjust adjustments more quickly, but uh, we'll see what happens. If, the, if you make those adjustments in terms of um, the border more quickly, does that mean that people currently in isolation or quarantine will be able to come out of that or would yes. they all have to yeah. serve their it, it, Depending on where they've been, if they've been in a location that still presents as a concern to South Australia, then they'll be required to complete their 14 days. Whereas uh, if, for example, they've come from some regional location in Western Australia, then in all likelihood they will be able to end their quarantine period, but we'd certainly encourage them to finish their day 1, 5 and 12 COVID test. Is the anniversary today of our first COVID case here in South Australia? Are you able to just reflect on the past year and what you've been faced with the challenges? Oh, I think everybody in South Australia, and probably Australia, has um, had a year like no other. Um, it's gone very quickly. Um, there's been so many changes and uh, events that we've had to respond to. Um, I think South Australia Police, SA Health, the emergency services, um, right across the community we've uh, learned to adapt. Uh, we've had to learn we learn about uh, new ways of interacting with each other, uh, new ways of participating in business and social activities. And um, my hope is that this isn't something that has to persist for much longer than absolutely necessary. I think everybody probably thought 1 January 2021 was going to be a, a new day and we wouldn't be dealing with COVID, but the reality is 
um, we still have some time to go before we see the benefits of the vaccine. So we need to maintain the, the level of readiness that we have now. No, I haven't had any conversations personally. Uh, I'm not aware of any conversations at this stage. I clearly understand the, the implications of these sorts of changes and impacts on sport and other business activities, though. No, not at this stage, no. Um, when you were talking about 12 months and, and all that sort of stuff, do you have know, Professor Spurrier over the weekend uh, an interview uh, with us suggested the QR code? She'd like to see QR codes stay here. What's your view on that and the use of QR codes outside of COVID? Uh, my, my commitment, based on the advice I've received, is that QR codes are in place simply and solely for the purpose of managing COVID-19. And when we no longer require them for COVID-19, there will be no requirement for people in South Australia to check in and use the QR system for entertainment, business and other activities. Uh, this is for the, for the pandemic. It's probably worth pointing out that now that the capability has been developed, if there were another pandemic in the future, we could institute the same sort of mechanism for that specific purpose. But there is no intention to run QR codes for um, businesses beyond any necessary period which is related to COVID-19. Um, is there any suggestion, therefore, that you, uh, there is a potential differing, starting a bit of a differing opinion between yourself and no, look, Professor Spiria, or at, at worst, a, a rift over this? No, I, I didn't know Professor Spiria this time last year. Uh, we've come to know each other very well. Uh, we are engaged uh, at least on a weekly basis, uh, and often more regularly than that in relation to uh, dealing with the pandemic and the sorts of initiatives that are put in place. Um, there is no rift. Um, and my reading of the article was that she said it would be nice to have in supporting the uh, contact tracing efforts for any type of uh, uh, health issue within the community. I, I couldn't dispute that, but QR codes for COVID are for COVID-19 only, and they will stop when we don't need them. Um, well, obviously, uh, our officers were engaged in looking for uh, this particular individual. Uh, it's very pleasing that she's been apprehended. Um, it's now a matter that's before the court, so we'll leave it at that. And the direction you came in last night at about 10 as you said, Commissioner was signed off then. Is there a reason why it wasn't published until after 12 o'clock on the police website? Uh, because this is the mechanism we have to follow. Um, I sign the direction, the direction has to be uploaded onto the state government websites. Uh, our communications team have to take it and convert it into a format that can be produced and then it's uploaded. Th these are people who are were on a day off, on, on a Sunday afternoon, uh, work right through the afternoon. Uh, the first opportunity I had to have it put in front of me and it was completed was for me to sign at 10.15. It was then brought back to the office where it was produced in a format that could be uploaded. So when you when you break it down, as much as it might seem like a delay, um, it's an appropriate amount of time. Commissioner, can I just ask you therefore about restrictions and the wider restrictions? Transition Committee meets tomorrow. Yep. Um, given what's happened with WA, can you give us any insight about what conversations might be had about wider restrictions tomorrow? Um, I can certainly confirm that we'll be talking about the restrictions, but the outcome of those conversations is probably a question best asked tomorrow. In terms of uh, making the areas smaller from the entire WA to smaller regions, would that be done within a few days, do you think? Absolutely, yes. It's, it's, it's just about the availability of information and the level of confidence we have. So given that uh, the Western Australian authorities have imposed a lockdown for the Greater Perth area, uh, I would anticipate, uh, if we have the information we require, that we would align our restrictions to that same sort of locality, um, which I think will be good news for everybody. But it, it also will impact on people still because most people travelling from South Australia are probably going into the, the Greater Perth area. Okay. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.